and it's being recorded by RCTV, and you can find that on Verizon 33, Comcast 22, and um, www.rctv.org. Because I remember the last time you were here. Okay, um, the first, for the first order of business is Mallet Morgan Conservation Land Trail Project in the Trails Committee. I'm Kim Monich Larder. I work for the town and I'm the staff person that uh, supports the Trails Committee. And put the map up. Um, we wanted to update the commission and we wanted to let the public have a chance to hear a little bit more about the upcoming work that the Trails Committee is planning. You can leave the door open. This is a we have to keep it open. It's a public meeting. Okay, I'm okay. sorry, Cam. That's fine. Um, so, two projects ahead of us, one this fall. Um, and then one, a larger trail project that um, we'll be doing in the, in the upcoming years. Um, uh, this, so the first project is, um, can you scroll down, let me see the top of the map, just a little bit, Jeff, thank you. All right, so in, we, we appeared before the Conservation Commission last April, and he gave us permission to do this trail here, from Lowell Street through to Willow Street, on the spur of the river. Um, the Abrajona River under the existing townwide trails permit. We had that scheduled for August, um, but we postponed by five, six weeks because of the butter had some um, concerns about whether the town fully owned the Millet Conservation Area and where those property bounds were. Um, town Engineers Division has researched that and the town is comfortable that Conservation Commission does in fact control this land. Um, and the boundaries that you see there are, are correct. So uh, we're trying again, September 29th, we'll, weather permitting, we'll be out there to do this project. So this is a existing trail that needs a lot of work, needs to be renovated. The big piece will be to put in about 45 feet of boardwalk. There's a short bridge here, about eight feet. Um, we'll put signposts in um, at Lowell Street at this junction and here where there's an open meadow and so people can really see where the trail is going to be. Um, we'll blaze the trail. Um, that's that project. So that's um, happening this fall. Materials are on hand. It's not a grant support project. Um, the larger vision, Chuck, could you scroll so I can see the uh, bottom of the map then? So, very recently, we found out that the, the Trails Committee has received the Recreation Trails Grant that we applied for last February. So we were before you last February to tell you about the grant, to get your blessing, and we got some good feedback from you on, on how long the boardwalks were, for example. Um, so that project, uh, the, those grants have just been awarded. Um, did you see that made the front page of the Chronicle? I didn't know. Lower half. Front page, lower half. Okay. Like to be uh, the full? <laughs> it, it did. It and, did. and I was muffled. I was getting these letters that said, we think you got the money, but don't say anything. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm seeing articles about it. So it is. It's on the front that, page. That was of partly why we let um, the immediate waters of the you know, land conservation area and then some a little wider around Hunt Street and the other end just let people know because we knew people were going to find out in the newspaper and wanted to give them a chance to find out. Um, and let, and let the commission too know what's going on. So um, I haven't signed any paperwork yet. I haven't even seen the paperwork. So the first part of the, the um, grant project will be to sign a contract with the state. Um, and then we'll be back before the commission to have, get the conservation permits for this part of the trail. So from Hunt Street, uh, crossing the average on the river, and then meeting up with the trail that we'll be building this fall. So it's as we've discussed before, there'll be a kiosk at the Hunt Street end um, to let people know about the trail and about uh, the Abrajona River and the larger Mystic River watershed. There's about a 90-foot bog bridge there. I think that's maybe a 20-foot short bridge. Um, boardwalk there, and then finally, actually that's like 10. That's a 20-foot bridge over the Abrajona. We have at least until June of 2020 to do the work. So it'll be spread out over a, wide, a long period of time. Work will be done with um, basically battery-operated hand tools with the exception of, you know, we have a portable generator. If we cut almost everything off-site, if we needed to build something on-site, 
we could bring a small generator in. Uh, and DPW will volunteer the labor to put that kiosk in, which means a, um, an auger of some sort. Otherwise, it will be hand tools spread out over a long period of time. That's where we're at. We want, I don't expect work to start until the next calendar year, 2019. Um, we have to go through the permitting, as I said, with, with your permission. I have a question yeah. on, on that in the article. It, it didn't really say anything about the completion of the work, but it said the funds had to be spent in FY19. Yeah, that's, that's not true. Okay. The article otherwise was pretty good, but that is not true. Right. So can it, can the work run over past end of FY19? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, I, I, since I don't have the grant paperwork yet, I don't know when we have to add, spend all the money, but I, it's at least June 2020. Okay. This is a reimbursement grant, which means we spend the money and then submit the receipts to the state. Um, there's a matching portion, which is largely labor by volunteers. Um, and a little bit of uh, the kiosk will be donated by um, Reading residents and the DPW is donating some, some labor as well. So can the part from Lowell to Willow Street, a parallel in Willow Street, that will be done this year? Yeah, we can, so that's the September 29th is our work date. We, you know, weather permitting, um, I doubt we'll get it done, but we'll get the bulk of it done. And, and how long do you think it'll take to, to do the work? Uh, we'll be out there six or eight hours that day. Oh, so it'll just be one day? Um, Someone else can, can slap me if I'm being too <laughs> ambitious. It really depends on how many volunteers we've got. We've yeah. had a pretty good um, sort of a core group of skilled volunteers. A couple of them aren't going to be available. So I'm guessing we'll get the bigger boardwalk done. Uh -huh. um, we may get some help from students at the Austin Preparatory School. If we do, then we'll have them painting signs, repainting the two signs at, at the either end. Um, but I'm guessing we won't get this little bridge done. I'm thinking we'll be back out there on another weekend sometime this fall. Okay. Any questions from the commission? I have a question about uh, the staging area and where we will you mobilize. Uh, is it up Willow Street? And if you had to build on site, where would you stage? Um, so, yes, we'll be driving and park, uh, parking in this area. This is an open battle. This is a You'd hate to have the public parking down there, but it's a, a driveway manageable to get our vehicles in for volunteers. Um, we'll be doing the prefabbing and cutting at the Matera Cabin on this project. I don't anticipate cutting anything in the field. We should really have, be carrying everything in and putting it together um, in the field. If we do cut something, we bring a tarp, and you know, it's all pressure-treated wood, basically, so we try to catch them. Looking for volunteers <laughs> and bridge designers. <laughs> okay. I didn't know there was a trail or a driveway all the way that far into the field. Uh, do remember there was a gentleman right there and he was cutting, he was um, volunteering to yeah. cut invasives yeah, and we walked some. down there. Uh, Fairmont of Japanese not leading right. here, and either this house or this house, I'm not sure which, is mowing down here. Um, it actually looks really nice. It's a, it's a pretty meadow right there. So you're going to drive on a meadow or an established no. driveway? So this is basically a, a, a driveway. It ends here. We'll drive there. We'll, um, it's to, we'll park in the meadow, I guess, for about, just for the volunteers. There's also parking up here on Willow Street, so if, if we think we're going to get too many people, we'll suggest they park up there. Are there any comments? And uh, did you folks sign in? There's a sign-in sheet. Um, the gentleman and your name, sir? Tom Stegen, 20 Hunt Street. Uh, as, as, a, as a resident of Hunt Street, I was wondering if you've got any uh, dimensioning of the impact in terms of are people going to walk here, bicycle here, drive a car here to, to enter? and just what, what can a resident expect in terms of 
impact from this. So the vision is that this will be primarily a trail to serve the neighbors neighborhoods at each of the three around each of the three trailheads. The well, that conservation area is, is also sort of central between uh, the Birch Meadow schools, the um, Austin Preparatory School, and then to the south, the train station, the library. Um, I think there was something else. Oh, I don't know, the um, senior citizens um, housing over on uh, in Tannerville. So we see it as primarily a neighborhood draw. Um, if people were to drive, there's three different neighborhoods they could park in. We've already heard from some of your neighbors about parking issues on Hunt Street. Um, I don't know we have a good remedy for for you, except that the, um, the Board of Selectmen are the traffic and parking um, authority in the town. Um, I think we've heard enough already that I think when we do the trail work that starts at this end, we'll try to get volunteers to just plain spread out. Maybe they can park over here on Vine Street. Um, but we'll look at that before we um, we do the work days and try to figure out how we can spread the impact. Um, yeah. But your overriding assumption is that the demand for this will be local, people who can walk to it from the neighborhood. We think that will be the primary draw. Um, it's a great birding spot, so I think maybe you'll get some small group of birders. We've had some interest from um, the Reading Ramblers, which is a group of seniors that do walks around town uh, a couple times a month. They've expressed some interest in using the trail when, once it goes through, um, so it would be a matter of communicating with those groups. And if the Trails Committee does an event to publicize the trail, um, think hard about where we stage the, um, the hike from. That's good. Neil Matt, on the street. Um, so do you guys actually organize group walks through the trails and stuff like that? Is that what you said? Um, we've done seasonal walks every year. We do one or two seasonal walks. With multiple people, correct? Like so. Now, that would be multiple places that you don't have this to facilitate parking, correct? So that we will have a parking issue. So we're basically guaranteeing we will have a traffic issue. That's, I don't know what we can say. It's, it's public issue. land. That's, that's my it's issue. the Trails Commission Committee with Conservation Town tries to um, spread the wealth, develop trails throughout town, and encourage people to use it. Um, it's hard not to have any impacts on the neighborhood. I, I, I agree with the fact that. It's negative play. It's not a pro, it's a con. Uh, I think it ends up being that it's a, a, I mean, if you guys are probably expecting the worst case scenario, it, these things don't take off. There's only a few people that use it, and the birders only go during a certain time. There's the better access is on Willow Street. You might have a hidden entrance for Hunt Street. We don't know, but if it doesn't work out, you know, and there's too much parking and people are jamming up the neighborhood, then you can go to the selectmen and you can tell them what, what the issue is. But right now, it's a public street and it's conservation land. And like Kim said, we develop conservation land. But you do have options. This is not the final say on the parking. I don't expect people are going to go down there. It doesn't even look... Um, it doesn't look like it's an inviting spot to park. I mean, someone's going to have to know about it and say, "Hey, let's go, you know, go down Hunt Street." And there's there's the kiosk. Can I add to that? I, you know, I'm the chairman. I should know where every <coughs> conservation land is, but I wouldn't have known <laughs> that trail at Hunt Street unless I we had a project right at the end of Hunt Street. And I tried to walk down the trail, except I was stopped because it was all wet. Um, the other two areas, I probably wouldn't, I'd have a hard time parking, and, and I personally, I, I wouldn't probably park there. I'd find another place to, to hike, quite frankly. So I would hope that it would be more of a, a local type of uh, thing. And um, this gentleman, your name is? Um, and you live where? Where I'm do you sorry? where do you live, Mr. Phillips? Um, I was just about to say on Willow Street. Okay. Will Butters 
for this proposed plan. And I'd like to, like to say at the onset, I'm really just surprised and displeased by the fact that this project is already underway without having had citizen input. You can't put up a fence or a shed without notifying the abutters. We got no notification of this except for the latest, the latest uh, notification was a letter dated September 5th telling us this will be our first opportunity to get in, but we disapprove of this strongly for a host of reasons, and we just like to know what can be done to reverse this. We think it's an intrusion on our privacy because this is in our backyard. We think it's an issue of safety. We think it's an issue of depreciated property value and uh, several other, other issues. We went up and down the street and spoke to neighbors, and I gotta say on balance, more people were opposed to this than in favor. And I should think that if people on Hunt Street uh, uh, are aware of what the implications might be for traffic, for unknown visitors, for parking and all the rest, that they'd be up and on over. But we certainly are. And we want to tell you, we just approve of this. And um, when it comes to safety, who knows who's going to be trespassing on our property. A lot of the properties on our street don't have a fence in the back. Now, now this is more or less coercing them to preserve their own privacy and safety. They have to install the fence. A number of them have children. I just spoke to the fellow uh, who's a new property owner. You have his name. Uh, right there in the corner on Lowell Street. Serenity. Serenity. I talked to him about it. He said, yeah, that thing's right, right next to my house. He was, he, without hesitation, he said, I'm opposed to this altogether. Um, when we bought our property, we were told, gee, look at one of the wonderful features. You've got conservation land behind your house. You're going to have privacy. It will really enhance the value of your property. Now, now with that trail there, it's going to have an impact on us in all those ways. Um, as it is already, we see a lot of kids trafficking to and from Austin Prep, up and down Willow Street. There's always candy wrappers and other, other debris as a result of their activity. Um, the cigarette butts, not to say that from Austin Prep, but uh, you're going to have all kinds of traffic where people are probably going to be walking their dogs. I hear tell that there have been objections to people in their dog drop droppings over at the town forest where they're not picking up after their dogs on the trails. This is going this could be another issue. But uh, I got to tell you, I really, I really can't believe it. The procedure that a committee, a subcommittee, or whatever it's to be called under conservation can go ahead and impose something like this on the rest of the citizens in the town without our input. So you, you, you understand the one that the land belongs to the Conservation Commission? It's like if you wanted to put a new path on your property. Same, same thing. So all that, the, this is the input part right here. Now I understand what you're saying, but I just wanted you to um, kind of understand where the commission opens up public space for the entire community, um, not just for the neighbors that abut it. And to have open space that doesn't have access to it is, is not a winning concept because if no one can enter and enjoy it, we won't get any more. So people need to use it. And, the, you know. Proposed, what the proposed nature of the use is all significant. That makes all the difference. I like didn't hear that first part. Uh, what you propose in the way of use of public property, that's what's significant. And we're, set, we're telling you what, as citizens, who have a vested interest in this program, we're telling you what the implications are to us. And it wasn't right that you went ahead with this program without consulting stopping the abutters. And it's actually going to increase liability the town too, because this is going to present a safety issue. And there's ever litigation because of some, some activity that's derived from these trails. I'm going to say here and now today, the town's going to feel the liability. There'll be recourse on the part of anybody who's victimized. No, it's the same as any park or any bare meadow, all that. Same thing. It's it's the same liability exists there. There's no different liability here. I respectfully disagree. Well, you go to the town you forest, can... you know, you have a buffer in the corner of the road, and people's front yards face that town forest with a buffer in the corner of the road. That's a big difference. We're talking about backyards. Anybody here in the room would probably agree with me when I say your private land use is usually in your backyard. And this is what you're really encroaching on. 
I don't understand the liability. Is there some sort of um, insurance actuarial scale well, that, that okay, helps me okay, understand the backyard use as opposed to a front I'll yard use? Good example. When I brought, brought back and forth about 95. No, I'm hearing your example. Are you, uh, are you involved with an insurance company? That's, that's what I'm asking. I mean, is this just your opinion, or is this based on what you do for a living? This is, this is based on risk and exposure. And where do you get that uh, expertise? Well, I'll, I'll take where I get it from. If I was in any way damaged by activity derived from that trail... I'm just trying to ascertain whether it's your opinion or it's an expert, you're, you're an expert in the field. I have to be an expert at least okay. to be a property owner and an environment. That's all I wanted to establish. Let me ask this then. If I go to Group 9, go up down Group 95 and I see the rest area, they post as to whether or not there is security on duty. What are you going to have in the way of security? To protect the neighbors. They're not going to have security. Yeah. That's, you know, what's... There are numerous places in town where people enjoy the road. property and, and nobody... That, that kind of security obviously doesn't exist. It's there for the public domain. It's, it's not... I mean, there's no, there's no greater liability being living next to conservation land or a park or a school or any other public domain. If it's secluded, I disagree with you. Well, I've lived on Bear Meadow for over 25 years now, and I, I don't know what kind of liability you're talking about. And I live right next to the parking lot mm -hmm. to Bear Meadow. We've got kids out there that's not I have fires. All the time. I have kids out there all the time parking, cops kick them out all the time. Yeah. But I've personally not had a problem. You have to do what you want to bring the parent, and you're saying that's necessary. I'm just saying it's 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 a beautiful conservation area. It's there for everybody to enjoy. They've got to be able to park and access it some way. And it's just I mean it's part of the public domain dilemma. Gentleman in the back, your name and where you live, please. Yes, you. Um, I live in Pond Street, Ninth Street, and I do some every day. I do walk. I don't Sir, can we get your name? Sure. Your name? Well, Robert Pyle, 9th Street. But every day I, I walk around the neighborhood in different paths, different years, different uh, days. But I often will walk um, over to the other side of the railroad track and down um, that similar type of road. And there is access to um, this small board at the end of that road. Um, and it's, it's a sign on it, and it's all been approved by the commission and everything else. I very seldom see anybody in there, but I've walked in there, and it's pretty peaceful. There's a path you can walk by. There isn't a lot of garbage, there isn't any garbage along the side of the, I don't know if they clean up or not. But like I say, that's, you really don't see any people in there. And it's, it's nice to be able to walk around. Uh, I didn't go around that far because the, the trails tends to require um, boots and so forth when you get into it because of the dam. It's not really maintained like you would um, touch traditional. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's my okay, thank you. And we're gonna we're gonna move on a little bit but I'll entertain one more comment from you, ma'am. <coughs> um, Your name and where you live? Miles McGowan, 22 Willow Street. I back up to the land. I'm all, all for it. Um, the Abijona River, I heard about when I was a child, my daughter lived in Win Winchester Highlands, and when they went swimming in the Abijona, each day they'd come home a different color because of the uh, the leather industry up there. Right. So anyway, I used to live on Willow Street, right opposite Hunt. I had four kids under four in a very small house, and I bought a house on Willow Street, and I would, my mother would watch my kids, and I'd go right down Hunt Street and across to my house. Um, my kids, that was their playground. That hill you're talking about, I'd take them down there and kick it. I found out years later that they, the neighborhood kids actually had a boat down there, but those are the things you don't find out until many years later. Um, my only, as far as the, the um, ecosystem is, I know when they put in Austin, we had rats, and I just, you know, I don't know if that would be the same kind of thing that, you know, I mean, they only stayed for as long as, you know, but they were down there. But I am definitely in, in, uh, 
in favor of it, and it, it, people are gonna, they're just not gonna do it. It's just a nice piece of land to walk through. Thank you. And uh, it's never presented a problem to the neighbors. Okay, thank you, very, thank you very much. I think we're gonna move on. I got a letter saying if I had questions or comments that I was invited to this meeting. I'd okay, but I don't want, to, what I don't want to hear is the same I have aggravation, okay? Up, but I'm Go ahead, your name um, and your name. Linda Phillips, 42 Willow Street. Um, we have talked to most of the neighbors and we can give you, some of them are gonna come, one of them's here tonight because they felt strong enough. We're town meeting members, so we kind of pay attention a little bit more, but I wanted to ask how many other conservation area trails go by people's backyards? Oh, there's many, <laughs> tons. Yeah, Curtis. Oh, this one we had a project. Is it Hensy? Yeah, it? we have. Uh, it's right next door. Most of the new developments, the subdivisions, have trails incorporated into that design that the developers. So 1260, 1264 Main Street, the new development off of Franklin Street, will have one which is. Um, uh, I've got the name of the street, but it's right across the street from the cemetery. We'll have one. Um, there's access on Kylie Drive, right next to a new house that's, that's, going, that's, that's being built thinking. right now. Uh, ends up in the cemetery in Charles Street. Charles Street um, path goes through um, Timberneck Swamp, which runs along the backyards of Belmont, all the way down, and then out through Ivy. So it's hard to have, I mean, this town is pretty developed and the conservation land and open space is established and the encroachment on houses and buildings makes it closer and closer. So there's probably a lot of examples, even more than I've just said, that, that people are close to paths. So why is there an impetus to make a path or a trail um, and then say it's for the neighbors when the neighbors don't want it because it will negatively affect us. We've already had issues with Austin Prep kids building a bonfire down there. We happen to be home. Our house is over 125 years old and we have a carriage shed in a barn. It's kind of a historic property. And if we're not home because we're away, we what do we do? Put up a motion light, have it go to the police department that somebody's back there doing something mischievous. We've had kids from Austin Prep because the parents don't pick them up till five. So after school, they walk down Willow Street by a PNS. Trash is all over our, our yard, and my planters at the end of my driveway. They've been back there smoking after school. So this area is already identified by, by them because there is a tar path in that actually stops at the border of, of my property. Uh, behind their house, the, the path. It's a tar path. And the other neighbor who just moved in a few years ago, the boys have ATVs. And they've been driving out there in the meadow when I had called you and they stopped that or they haven't done it when I've been home. They're driving ATVs out in the meadow and on the tar path out there because they think this is a great place for them to do. Now tonight we were getting ready to go. We walked out of the house. My daughter saw someone riding a bike on the on, on the path. So she went down and asked him. We found out it was a neighbor on the railroad track. The, his father has been clearing some of that land with the, what do you call it, the brush that's uh, invasive. He's been cutting some of it. But he has a concern, uh, Vincent, he has a concern that it's going to draw trouble from kids now that they can smoke pot and, and all of that for them to congregate because it's not, we have a good view because we're nine feet above it because we have a wall in the back. But these people, their land walks right, you can't tell where their land ends and the path begins other than there's the partial. So I really think that it's a very, so we have William Carney at uh, 12 Wall Street is very strongly against it. Marcel and Sarah Dubois were at 16. They were gonna try to make it tonight. They were very against it. They have is fenced in and they have a dog. The neighbors have a dog. And every time someone strange goes by, the dogs bark, I have a dog. The dog barks when people, the kids from Austin Prep yell and make noise. Um, the guy at the end of the street, Nick, that we talked about, he has a dog as well. He's on Lowell Street. 
So there's not a lot of support in the neighborhood for this. And if it's such a short area, is it really worth it to aggravate okay. the neighbors to put in the path? Thank you. Gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> the, the trail. Your name? Well, David Williams. I serve on the trails committee. Okay. The trail we're talking about has been in existence for 40 years. It's been developed and redeveloped and it's been forwarded. Yeah. Well, it's been signed at Willow Street and it has been signed at Lowell Street. That's one form of promotion. Different scout groups over the last 40 years have gone in and done rehab projects. And this project will more clearly define the trail. That's what and, we don't want. Well, I would think that you would want the trail no, defined don't. because that way people would stay on the trail. They wouldn't. No, that's not the point. You're inviting the by having a trail. It's like a driveway saying, well, bring your car to the garage door. It's an invitation. Okay, okay. I want to orient back and forth, okay? Let's make this clear. Can't this is yeah. a direct questions is, to the chair. This is a public meeting. Your name, sir, uh, and where you live. Uh, I live at 46 Willow Street. I've actually lived in Reading for 32 years, and one of the reasons we bought the house was because we were told that the, the property behind us would never be developed. It was conservation land. Now, I'm not opposed to um, you know to any kind of uh, conservation and you know bring the public bring the public to it. But has there been any consideration in terms of any kind of fencing or anything that would, uh, the abutters like Gary Phillips, myself, other neighbors where our yards go right down, right to the conservation land. And it, it, as a matter of fact, in, uh, last winter, we were out in our backyard coming back from the gym, and someone walked right through our backyard coming right up from that land. I had to call the police because I think it does invite that, you know, again, that's maybe a rare instance. But I think to Gary's point is that we are very close to that conservation land. And again, I'm not opposed to you know uh, the bird watchers or having people enjoy the nature. I'm not. But I think it's a concern because kids do go back down through that road and come up around near Willow Street. And we're just concerned as neighbors, has there been any consideration as to any kind of fencing or any kind of protection that would stop the public from just walking right up through our backyards? Fencing is um, not something that the commission puts up, so there was no consideration for fencing during this project. Uh, are you guys all familiar with Pineville Conservation Area? That's that's in the middle of a thickly settled area of town. All the trails, well, they were they were first going through the Pineville um, Pineville Ave and ending up on Maple Street. And all the, it, it, there's, there's a few trails in there that weren't put in by the committee that neighbors have actually attached a trail in the back of their house right to a trail that the uh, trails committee put up. So they're using the land themselves and actually they have their own little boutique access to it. So that's an area that doesn't get a lot of use. And, you know, maybe the same kind of discussion happened when that was opened up and, and it became more of a neighborhood area. Now, I understand that the neighbor, the neighborhood is not against, is against this or some of the neighborhood. We haven't heard from everyone, but I, but I know that the people that are here, they're, they're worried about what's going to happen. But the commission has conservation land and we, we open it up for people. And if we don't do that, and we hide it, and we put it away, then what good is it? You know, it's not helping anyone if it's all the neighbor's personal backyard. And that may have been what, you know, what the, fact, the de facto, um, you know, result of what happens out here because it wasn't great access. And someone walking through the yard, maybe it was because the, um, you know, the path ended and there was no clear way out, so they didn't want to walk back, so they walked up where the lights were. I don't know. Oh, they do it all the time, and you never start because there's no snow there. Well, I think the, I think the concern though was that because Lowell Street is such a busy street, and kids kids kind of congregate over at the uh, you know the PNS, they walk across the street, they go through the trail, 
it, it's not like they're going in there for a specific reason, like to go to lunch or to enjoy nature, as you know, I, I'm sure the intent is. It's that I think it brings, you know, sometimes it will bring kids back there, like I think Linda and Gary have described, that as neighbors, you know, we've been there, like I said, for 32 years, and that, that is, you know, to I think this gentleman's point, that the, the trail has been there. It hasn't been promoted, and people have used it on occasion. Quite honestly, I was surprised when our own neighbor went down there and had the right to go down and clear out a lot of that brush, because I think that opens up a lot of that, you know, for, for kids to go down there and to misuse it. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's intended the way, you know, uh, the woman has described it, I mean, that's fine. But um, that's all with good intent. I'm not sure that, 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 that some of these kids that are going to be going back there um, are going to be utilizing it in the way that I think that uh, the conservation you know, committee is, uh, is hoping that they would use it. So, that, so you can understand as a neighbor um, what our concerns would be, because now we're going to have activity down there at night, and it's very dark down there. There's no lighting. Um, you know, it, it, it's now going to be a more clearly defined and promoted path that we think might engage just, you know, uh, hopefully it won't, but it might engage more activity that you weren't intending, uh, you know, for that to be the case. And that's where our concern is neighbors comes to come into play. And that's why I think we're here tonight, to raise that concern. And, you know, if it was a more structured uh, kind of proposal, and like Gary said, I think if we had more of an opportunity to be a part of this conversation, it doesn't seem like, I mean, based on what you're saying, that we need to use the conservation land as a way of uh, being able to obtain that in the future, which, again, I'm not opposed to that either. But I think it, I think there needs to be consideration for the people that do live in that area. It, and even though all have good intent, I'm not sure that that's how it's going to end up. So we're talking about reestablishing an existing path, that there's historic evidence that it's there. I've seen it myself, and people have talked about it that are sitting right here tonight. That's this part here that we're talking about. So to reestablish, to I mean, we have scouts coming here that want to reestablish paths, and so I don't, I don't see the connection with this that all that input um, was needed. It's nice that you guys came, and uh, you know, I hear what you're saying, and I, and I think on the other side, the only, the only thing that I would mention is that, you know. I'm, uh, I'm going to just say, just basically, I'm just killing myself to get kids in the woods. And they bring candy bars, and they bring their dogs, and they break branches, and they break down trees. But that's what it's all about. And someday, one of those kids is going to say, you know what? If I spent a lot of time in the woods. Maybe I was, you know, lighting the fire and I shouldn't have been, or busting some trees, but maybe he's the next conservation guy or she's the next conservation guy in Reading. This is why we're doing it. We need to get the kids in the woods, people in the woods, and the more people in there, the more policing it's, that happens. The commission with these paths can walk the land. We need to walk our lands once a year, and um, that's at a minimum, but, you know, you guys all know that you can call the commission now. If something's happened, we'll get on it. The police have access because there's open paths. There is safety involved in what we're doing also. So that, I, mean, I get a bit One thing to consider if you want, I mean, again, because I have no skin in this game, but a well-defined path that's more publicly accessible, if it does get busier, tends to push off other activity that may be a little, you know, clandestine or out of the public's eye. And if it's if, if it's an inviting area for people to go through, kids may not feel so at will to do what they please down there. So it's just a thought. Just one last follow-up question. Um, was, it, was there ever any consideration for anything other than the defined path that's already currently there, maybe to bring it in a little bit deeper, to keep it a little bit further away from the I, neighborhoods? I would defer to... Well, there's a wetland problem, and... You know, they walk the trail and try to figure out where the best spot. But yeah, Kim, well, whenever yeah. we lay out a trail, we try to stay as far away from the land bottom as, as possible, but stay out of the wetlands to the extent possible. So we really have tried. I have to say, walking out there, it's pretty clear to me where those properties are. So that's why we, you know, we've tried to do. The, I hear you. My land about uh, conservation land too, um, but we're well aware of uh, 
of your properties when we tried to stay away from them. And we appreciate your input. We push back, but we appreciate your input. And the people on Willow Street have been noticed twice. And they've been in the butters, uh, courtesy letters twice. And the people on Hunt Street were noticed um, after we found out we had the grant and I was um, free to publicize it. Kim, were they aware of the, the meetings um, with the Conservation Commission? No. Or, or just the notification that? So, um, okay. so this trail had already been uh, permitted. We've been before you in, in April. So just before, uh, two or three weeks before we had then this trail um, project planned, we sent out a notice to everybody that bought that trail. And then um, this one we noticed. But the other, the other your meetings, no. Um, I guess that takes place so early in the, I mean, it's a, it's a good lesson, and I think we need to think about that. Typically, we have let people know, um, you know, when we're ready to plan the work, and because we were being permitted on the existing townwide trail permit, there's no requirement um, to notify abutters. When we come before you again to have this permitted, um, that's... We'll, we'll have to, uh, I assume that will be a, an RDA or a um, notice of intent, and we'll have to notify everyone within 300 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, so there will be further notice before work happens here. Can I, can I just clarify something? We got a letter saying um, about a week before the trail committee was going to be out there working. That is not adequate time for input number one and it's a dumb deal and that gets people even more upset because we've had no say um, because I'm not ob ob objecting I have serious concerns about what may happen there because of what's already happened there we've been there 22 years but I should if it's that bad that you can't go 100 to 200 feet from our property to give us privacy so people can't see what we're doing in our backyard then why make a trail or make a bridge? Because we're not that hard up in town for trails, it sounds like, that we have to uh, encroach on the neighbors, call them and <coughs> give thanks and upset. Now I feel like on my fence, I need to put a motion light on there because what's gonna happen? It is gonna happen because it's already happened and no one knows about. The, the entrance to the area on Willow Street is a tar path enough for a car to go down, and it goes right down to that brown area there, which is our cattle shed and our, and our potting shed, which is a chicken coop, that it stops just before that land so that, that gets people down there. You can literally drive a car down there because our neighbor has when he's cleared the brush. So if you could have put it 200 feet closer to the river, and if that's too wet, then you know what? The neighbors are happy, we bought it, we didn't know there were gonna be trails there. Conservation usually means no one's gonna be behind there bothering you, it's gonna be quiet. We have deer that come and other animals. But I understand, but my understanding, this was already there. That. Private property means that. Conservation well, is open to for public use. Usually it means we're conserving it to leave it as natural area. No. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it, we live near conservation land in Wilmington, and that's what it meant there. Have you ever we walked in it? For Twenty something years. So. Have you walked in it? Yes, it's a, yeah, we live next to it. Yeah. Then uh, you were using it as as it was intended then. No, but we walked in it because we bought it the land, and we wanted to see where it was. Con conservation land is for public use. And it's, well, they can use it as it this is, is a trail that existed that's being reestablished. It's dawn to dust use. All right, no, it, based on what happens on our other trails, sometimes things happen. But the trails committee, if you've gone to Bear Meadow and you've seen the trails there, they're beautiful. They're DCR trails. There's things that happen there, but they don't happen all the time. It's, it's well used. We have many examples around town where things haven't gone haywire. So they've already gone that way where we are. That's why we're concerned. There's no... There's why did the trail end then at his uh, property line? Why did it end? It's a tar path. What? What? The trail ends, and it was not continued past our house. So they would never really, if you walk behind there, there's not a trail. You can make a trail by walking there, but there's not a trail that's clear. Well, it's in a, in a, a meadow, it, meadow, the path so spreads out. 
No, it's a forest that everybody's it, it couldn't be. I'm not sure. What is there a trail from one so to the, the other? Uh, um, there is a paved driveway here. It, it ends there. Mm -hmm. um, it goes up a little more. It goes and, up a few more. Um, Mr. Williams can attest to this being a, a trail from Wall Street through the Willow Street. He's used it over yeah. many, many years. Yes. Um, it's, it's definitely overgrown. Um, there's other uh, another um, person who lives in the neighborhood. It was at a trails committee meeting uh, an hour ago and is, is no longer in the room. But she also has walked that mm -hmm. entire and the, tra okay. the trails committee has received several um, emails from abutters that said that they were uh, they were happy about this project and they actually wanted to help uh, on, on the work days so there's, there's on, both, both sides the both sides the, the, the stuff's available the from there now there's only two people who are four she's one of them yeah and those are abutters right and we're 42 yeah. and they're 46 and 48 so you know. it's not the majority of people Okay, we're moving on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Seven ten. Although it's quarter of a notice of intent, two eighty five Main Street. Anything, Taj? Uh, there's people out in the hallway. Okay. Just give it a second. <laughs> I don't recognize anyone, but you know, I'll ask. Yeah, if anybody's here for uh, 285 Main Street. Mm. What? I uh. You live right next to a place. You're great. I mean, I I, uh, you know. I I love living where I live. And there's probably 15 different entrances to Bear Meadow. You know, there and are. one of them right next to ours. Sometimes they they drop stuff. You know, Pinedale. No, no. I thought Chuck is 1503 Main Street. Did they continue? Yes, Castellano. Yes. Is going to continue. Yeah. So I don't see anyone out there for. I can I can update everybody um, later on. Okay. 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 720, um, Notice of Intent 270, 193 Bancroft Avenue, Map 27, Lot 319, Rogers. It's a Notice Can of Intent. Can we uh, continue um, Do you want to 285 Main Street to yeah. the next meeting? Do I hear a motion to continue? Make a motion to continue uh, Notice of Intent 270-070, 285 Main Street, Map 12, Lot 43. A fire hot Taj Engineering LLC. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Do I hear a motion to continue notice of intent 270 0705 Main Street, lot A, map 60, lot 11, Castellano? So moved. Second? Second. Bob did a second. Second. All those Who in favor? Two people? What? I did a second. Well, I raised my hand, but I should speak. Dave and Bob. Yeah. All those in favor? Notice of Intent 270-0704, 1503 Main Street, Lot B, Map 60, Lot 12, Castellano. Do I hear a motion to continue? Motion to continue. Second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. And we have a notice of, notice of Intent, 193 Bancroft Ave, Map 27, Lot 319, Rogers, and I don't have my script. Do you have a script, Chuck? I, I don't have a script. Oh, I, can, I, I thought you meant the uh, RCTV script. <laughs> no. Sorry. Uh, let's get a script. Jack, you must know this by heart. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you, can t you can tell it. Jack, you've been here enough. You want to do the script? This meeting is conducted under the regulations of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40. As amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, uh, Section 7, as amended. Uh, I think, no? If I got it in a buyer's letter, does that mean I have to, do I understand you? Uh, yeah, oh, I'm going to ask. Oh. Yeah, you might have to uh, recuse yourself, which would be okay, because we do have a quorum. 
just let's just introduce ourselves. Okay, starting on my right. David Newmeyer. David Panette. Carl Sacconi. Rebecca Longchamp. Bob Hayes. Chuck Troni, Conservation Administrator. Before we get going, Carl did get a notification as an abutter. Chuck, should he recuse himself? Uh, recusing yourself is up to you. Oh. If you feel like, you know, you're new to the neighborhood, you know, all that, um, it's up to you. So you, you, you have an aversion to make people the with pitchforks yeah. and torches and stuff like uh, that. I mean, it's a, it is a decision that you make yourself. Okay. And, and so we can't tell you that. Okay. So if you feel you're like you're okay, you, then you're okay. If you make yourself known as an abutter, then you feel that you, if you feel that you can be impartial and fair to member of this committee, you can do. If you want to you do? Yeah. yourself. Okay. Fine. Here, uh, for the record, I'm Jack Sullivan, owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. I'm here with the uh, homeowner, George Rogers, in the back row. Um, basically, what, what the Rogers are looking to do, they're looking to uh, put an addition on their existing single-family home. They've lived in this home for seven or eight years. They have a growing family. They need some additional space. Uh, so they're basically looking to construct a mudroom um, with a full basement below it and a two-car garage on a, a, a slab on grade. And the, exist, the proposed addition will be going over an area that's currently the paved driveway. So there's very little increase in impervious service, if any, associated with this project. All the works um, outside of the 50-foot buffer zone to the wetland area to the rear, the closest point of the addition to um, wetland flag 5D is 57 feet. Um, where the commission usually likes to see some sort of drainage mitigation, even though we're, we really have very limited increase in impervious area, we are proposing a thousand gallon dry well to capture any new from, from this addition. Um, there'll be no trees cut within 100 feet of the, the wetland area. There is one tree just outside the 100 foot buffer, being a 14 inch tree. It's not a street tree, it's on that property. Um, that will come down because that's where the driving is going to be located. Um, they, they will be having a retaining wall along each side of the driveway, so a portion of that retaining wall is also within the 100 foot buffer zone. The grading for this project, uh, we set the, the garage grade to meet CPW standards for um, the, the, the slope requirements and widths uh, as far as driveways are associated with. To the rear of the addition, we're matching the existing grade. There's no grading changes to the rear of, of, of this addition. So there will be some foundation exposed at the rear of this, uh, which the architect and owner are aware of, but there will be no grading changes at all to the rear. So it seems pretty straightforward, um, especially where we're over an existing driveway, um, very limited increase in impervious, no tree cutting, and very limited site grading changes. And with the addition of the dry well, it seems pretty straightforward for a notice of that project. Um, but I'll open it up to the commission to see if they have some questions. Oh, I have one question, Jack. We have note to the, the site visit. It was in regards to the, uh, the dry well that you put in there. Yeah. That seems to be about right centered adjacent to where there's a rather large tree that's on the neighbor's property. And I just had a concern with the closeness of where that uh, dry well was that you're going to impinge upon the root structure of that large tree that's right on the property line. Which we don't want. So right. The, so, so the dry well could be relocated. Um, you know, possibly push it. We, we can even push it, you know, back into right. this area here. Yeah, uh, I, I spoke to the owner about that ahead of time on that large tree. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 I actually had not located sure. that as part of my survey, but we can relocate don't that dry well. Okay. But we'll keep it within the improvement of the work. Okay. Uh, Jack, your wetland line, the 100 foot BVW, when I follow 6B, 5B, 4B, it goes and up following that. But your line at the 100 feet, uh, right at the start of that retaining wall in the proposed concrete driveway, seems to go down. Am I reading it incorrectly? No, you're not. 
Okay. Or is it just you're taking a radius? Yeah, it should be a radius from like fl five, flag 5B. Um, uh, it, does, go it looks like just a straight line through there, so it might, it might be a, a, a little bit off. Yeah. It would be offset from a radius. I don't think it impacts anything, but I, it should be yeah, a, but a it, radius. But if you're talking about a radius, it goes down right. too, too far, I think. Um, and then, um, who did the uh, wetland delineation? Norse did, Norse Environmental did the, the lot to the right. There was a notice of intent in front of you guys about a year or two ago at 187 Bancroft. It went up to flag 2B on this property, and then I just continued it from there when I, when I did the survey work. Okay. Um, we did notice we did notice some piles of refuse um, around 6B, 5B, and then up towards the, that Paper Street of Tower Road, there's also a lot of, um, uh, a little bit of refuse back in there. Like when you say, like, leaves or grass clippings or? Yeah, yep. well, the stuff around 5B and 6B, there were also a lot of branches with that. Okay. But is that on, that's on the block behind them? Can't, yeah, I know, but uh, it's it was before those flags, so it's hard to say where it was. The homeowner, if you want to put that in the conditions that it's clean, Yeah. Uh, I hate to ask, but is that the boundary line I'm looking at? Just below 5B and 6B? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Then what right does the person in this lot have to clean out that lot? I mean, you can't have to clean out somebody else's well, property, I, can you? With all due respect, I don't know where that line was. It wasn't on those flags, so I don't know if it's on this property or that property. Yeah, well, it, it, it probably goes both on you know, both properties. George, I had to talk to George before the meeting. He's willing if there's some, okay. something to clean up. He will. It, this, this is the rear property line right here. So mm -hmm. some of these flags are off the property line, but if it's close, we, we can take care of it. And uh, we did have a site inspection, um, as Dave mentioned. Did you have any comments on the wetland line? No, we, it, I was going to mention the, the, the yard waste, but I knew it was kind of in a no man's land but the access is only from the side of the street yes that's unless you um, and, and i know we struggle with stream. that but we have a willing you know applicant that would remove the yard waste which is great and that's what we always look for so i mean that's that's great and it's really not that much it's, if he's willing yeah, enough, i was yeah. if he's if he's doing it that's cool yeah um, and it was just a tree um, when we were out there dave and me we were looking at the tree and we thought that that was uh interesting i think that um in the future i would like to know you know on the plan who who's doing the wetland delineation because we were walking back and forth several times trying to figure out flags and trying to understand some of those flags were yeah missing. how long ago oh so his Norse Norse's ended at two B. So we didn't see this typical silver. Right. So it must have been a while ago. It was a while. It was yeah. probably three years ago. Yeah. Seven. And I did this survey work probably eighteen months to two years ago. They, they, yeah. They've been working with the architect working on the design. Because so. even yours, there was very little left right. to the tail. Usually, I have more to it. Ninety. Yeah. Five percent of the time. And we're not saying that that needed to happen. It's just that we needed to know. Who's doing what? Yeah, that's all. I have, a, I have a question. Of course, like any homeowner, nobody wants to spend more money than they need to. If there's no additional impervious surface, is anybody asking you to put in the drywall, or are you just throwing that in there as a? Throwing it in there. Would benefit, if any, does it add other than cost to the it project? Doesn't, but on past projects, that's what this commission's looked for. I, I, I did one on Haystack Road that was mm -hmm. almost identical to this. It was over an existing driveway, and they still look for drainage. So it's just something, you know, I put on to get, to get the approval just because it's consistent with what the commission's looked for in the past. And, you know, I, I really applaud that, too, because I think probably the rest of the house and the impervious surface doesn't have any treatment, correct? Right. So... You know, with the stormwater regs, I think it does meet the letter of the law. And 
in addition to that, I think that uh, the commission historically has asked for that, not beyond my time, even back, I don't know when the first time you served, because you, you came well, no, here. No, not the very first time, the second time. Second time. Well, what, what, what year was that? I mean... Uh, 2005. So in 2005, the, the same process had been, the same process was going on with the Conservation Commission. When did the stormwater regs come in? Do you remember? It came in a while ago. Um, well, the big project you always had to do, you know, pre and post, right. but even with single family homes. It might have been back to like 1996, 2000. That's when the, the stormwater yeah. policy came up. Yeah. Okay. Jack, I do have one, one more question that, that arose just from <clears throat> looking at the, the, the drywall. Is the, the notation that you have and the, the uh, indication on the drawing for the proposed retaining wall with platform and steps? Um, where does that platform and steps go to? So coming out of the garage, there's a plat that we adore to the platform and those steps, it goes so they can get to their backyard. Does that meet the requirement for, if there's a door for the door swing and the requirement for? Yeah, Nancy Toomey is their architect who does most of the architectural plans in town, I would say. And she's put together a set of plans, so Glenn Redman will be reviewing that. Okay. Yeah, because I see it says 18-2 in, uh, in general terms. I think, to my recollection, I thought you needed 42 inches for a door swing okay. and, and a platform. 18-2 is from the corner of the addition to the property line. Right. And I, I believe that this, this platform is at least four feet wide. So if the door is a three-foot door, they, they will be able to make the swing. Right, but then if you take four feet off of that, that's 14-2. You have a 15-foot setback. Right, but the platforms do not go at the same way. Okay. All right. Yeah. They're exempt. Just like a chimney or is any part of the stairs, the platform and stairs are exempt or is it platform and steps are exempt if they were Any other questions from the commission? Chuck? No, I don't. I, I was surprised that that wasn't a street tree, but I'm glad you checked on that. So that's great. That was a question we had. Yeah. yeah. And any comments from the community? Hearing none? So, Chuck, we're not going to close, but. Yeah, we'll prepare it. will be ready at the next meeting. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Prepare for the next meeting. Uh, you can close if you want. Do I hear a motion? I make it. Uh, I make a motion to close. Um, uh, NOI two. Uh, there's no uh, NOI two seventy dash one ninety three Bank Rock Dab. It does have a file number. It's oh seven oh six. Seven oh six. Um, 193 Bank Rock Dev map, map 27 lot 319 Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. That side chuck, does it just get mailed to the hall or are they can they could pick it up or it, it does get mail, but it's um, certified mail or whatever. Um, would you like to pick it up? Phone call or the oh. um. <coughs> certified mail works? Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, RDA. 2017-10, um, 288 to 292 Grove Street, Lot 37, Lot 4, Meadowbrook Club is continued at the applicant's request until October 10th. Do I hear a motion to continue? So moved. Any second? Second. Dave had a, all those in favor? Okay. So, we're at 7.30, past 7.30, there's an order of conditions, 270-0664, 76 Longwood Road map, 
19, lot 15, minor plan change. Mm -hmm. and I take that one. Okay. Um. Mm, we're going to be winging it, I guess. So, Mr. Mahoney, would you like to explain your proposal? Your your minor. You're sure. looking for a minor. Yeah. So we're looking to um, add a, um, a patio at the the rear of the property. Um, it's outside the. Um, it's outside the 50 foot setback. It's outside the, the 25 foot, obviously, as well. Um, it's a paver patio, uh, 15 by 30. Um, and there was a, a landscaper. Oh, no. Okay. Um, if you want, I can provide. I've got two. Printed our documents. I could get it and if you want me to run down and get the plan. Don't, don't we have the plan? Yeah, yeah, yeah but I don't know it on the board. Yeah, everyone has a plan. Everyone has a plan. Okay. Yeah. Enough yeah, so they all have plans. Yeah. Um, so looking to do a um, 15 by 30 foot uh, patio. Um, there is a um, straw barrier, um, roundish, and um, uh, just looking to basically reseed the um, lawn as well. Are these pavers um, pervious or impervious? Do you know? It would be impervious. Okay. And the, the area that you're putting, the, that patio, that is currently grass area? Uh, correct, yes. So we're, we're, this actually, um, this project is actually to amend the existing order of condition, mm -hmm. and um, when this was brought to the commission, um, Mrs. Mahoney, we uh, were looking at a couple of things, but the easiest way forward was just to amend the existing order of condition. <clears throat> One of the reasons why that works is because we have an open order, and it, it's cleaner to do it that way. This project is outside of the 50-foot area. It would qualify for a minor project permit, but um, the paperwork wasn't ready, and it was it was again we would be doing two separate two separate things. So with this existing um, order of conditions, we decided to move this forward. It's just a 15 by 28 foot. Uh, paver patio and the detailed uh, narrative that was sent in by the uh, landscaper describes how he's going to use sand and whatnot and it is pervious so to me it was just something that um, as they saw their project develop they uh, realized that you know it, it really needed something else and, and um, that's why we're here tonight so um, that's really all I have to say. There's going to be no trees cut down, and it's mm -hmm. on existing lawn. It's more than 50 feet away. I think me and Dave were in this area uh, around the back side of the fence. There's like a small hill there. And, uh, this is, uh, you know, so some of the commission has been out to this property and understands that the wetland's not even on the site, and it's there's a fence around the entire property and all that there. I think I was there yeah. a long time, yeah. a while ago. A bunch of us were there when it first came through. So. But did you, you said that they were, did these pervious or impervious? Does it mean, is water going to go through these pavers or is it going to puddle on top of the pavers? It 
should go through so that yeah. safety is There'll be a certain amount of puddling right. no matter what. Right. Yeah. But yeah. it's uh, the spacing in between right. is filled with the, the, the sand of the, the stone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. That was it. Pervious. Yeah. Certainly the sub base as it's as it's described here is is certainly uh, pervious. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I really don't have a problem with this. Given the scope of the project as as it was. Yep. Do I hear a motion to approve a is an amendment? It's a my, uh, amendment to the uh, order of conditions. We have it on here as a minor plan change. Right. A minor plan change. So can I make a motion to uh, uh, amend and amend the order of conditions 270-0664, 76 long with road map? 19 lot 15 and approve the minor plan change from Mahoney. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see me back there? No reservation. I I no, I uh, prepare a letter. Uh, well, we want you to sign it out. Memorialize this. If you're all set. Thank you. I thought I was being terminated. I thought he asked me to sign it. <laughs> there you go. Here's your coat and your hat. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> okay. Um. Under the old new business, we have 193 Bancroft. You know, I had, uh, I looked at that tonight. So, those for, I, the first two were mistakes, so it's Jacobs. I would start with Jacobs. Okay. Yep. Well, it was new business, but now it's old business. I think I was thinking of the um, uh, site visits, and I put those down on the wrong list. Uh huh. So we have a certificate of compliance at 270-06577-73 uh, Fairchild Drive, that 45 lot 19 Jacobs, and we did a field inspection on Tuesday and met uh, Jean Jacobs there. Um, it looked um, it looked pretty good, very good, and the. Um, so there was a set of control was still up, and um, we, we thought that she could remove it at this point. Um, it basically was, um, wasn't there a deck there before, and they, they closed it, and they upgraded the, um, the, the support? I don't know, but it was a fantastic job. I, I don't know if there's a deck there. I don't remember what was there. I, just, there was I remember a deck. the wetland and the and the. The hill. deck wasn't as big as the as the. Um, I call it a she shed. <laughs> That's what it was. She cool. shed. Yeah, you've seen that advertisement. <laughs> It's beautiful. It, it, I think he uh, was salivating over the floor that she said. I think what's happened is, uh, yeah. I wanted one. Oh, <laughs> that kind of shit. Oh, oh, I get it. Yep. So, uh, do I hear a motion to uh, issue a certificate? I make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 270-0657-73 Fairchild Drive, maps 45, lot 19, Jacobs. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Do you want to um, get to the one person waiting out? Sure. Yes. All right. Before we get and then, we, then we'll go back to the other two. And um, we've, we've seen you before. Yes, you have. So you Gutierrez. I was here before to talk to you about uh, Baltimore Center, Creative Arts Center for the Matera Cavern. Um, as things have progressed, I'm um, wondering medical issues that are necessitating for me that I kind of scale back. So I'm here about a plan B, which would be to rent for a couple of hours, one night a week, the cabin to teach some adult cabinet classes, which um, is not really something that initially I would have to come before the commission, but there are a couple of things. So one is I'd like to teach these classes in one of the smaller of the two breakout rooms that are in the cabin, and I would like to be able to lay down uh, portable flooring. And 
want to make sure that would be okay. Um, it's a humming groove. Uh, it's not hardwood. It's uh, plywood. Plywood. Thanks. To the, to the and it doesn't need any nails or screws. What's that? Or a lot of the hand companies use this flooring when they travel. I'm hearing about it. So it would oh, be so. something that I would lay and leave there for the duration of my session of classes. But I just want to make sure, number one, that that's okay to do. Um, the, I measured the room. It is 12 feet by almost 17 feet. And the flooring that I have is 12 feet by 16 feet. So it would leave a couple of inches on either side of the room. Uh, that I could put some kind of a seal or lip. So it would present a, a hazard. Yeah. You're going to have people dancing that close to the walls? <laughs> not really. Not. Right. <laughs> not really. Um, and then the, the second thing is that I do know that you rent it out um, at two different rates for the uh, renting community and then for a nonprofit group. So I was um, here to ask if it's possible to get the rate, the lower nonprofit rate, if I am still willing to do some work and do a little facelift on the cabin, paint the rooms inside, uh, painting the ceiling of the uh, um, patio. Uh, the porch, as you're into that. Thank you. Thank you for the words tonight. <laughs> Porch, yeah. Porch. So the porch um, and just is in, bad. Inside, yeah. there's you know there's there's some artwork that's kind of not strategically placed. So just just brighten it up a little bit. Um, maybe add a couple more pictures of birds or deer or butterfly. I mean, welcome that a plant, things like that, um, and just general sweeping and keeping it clean, cleaned up a little bit outside. I like a bay window. I like a bay window. Yeah, it's, yeah, hard, yeah. it's hard to do yeah, with yeah. bay windows in a in a um, log cabin. <laughs> it's not impossible. It's no, just so you need a chainsaw. Though, I, think. <laughs> I have a chainsaw. I'll help you modify the cabin. Um, so you're not a nonprofit. No. Okay. Um, I don't think that I will. I will really be making much of a profit. Yeah. But it, it's really for me to do something and to teach a couple of tap classes on it. Uh, is there, is there, are these, um, I mean, are you charging a low rate to, um, you know, to the community so they would have um, the ability to access such a, such a class? I mean, you know, Matera is for, um, it's for the people of Reading, and again, it's like open space, and, right. and we need to be, uh, conscious of how it's how it's used, and most of the um, most of the times it's being used, it's being used by the rec to yep. teach, or by the conservation commission to or trainings or teaching and things like that, or a staging area for a walk. The library uses it, and um, so not usually do we have people in there that are, are making um, you know, like running a business and making right. money. Right. So I'm just looking to rent it out to do something like that. Um, I do know that typically a class like this, somewhere between 18 to $22 is what people would charge. I was planning on charging more like 14 15 Reduced rate. Well, you're on the right steps to becoming a nonprofit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That temporary floor, is that something that goes down and stays down? It would. So if you had, um, you know, just for instance, if you had, you know, kids coming in there to do a, you know, like a science day that brought in, you know, mud and frogs and turtles and things like that, how would that impact that floor? It would have to be cleaned. Can, can it take that kind of abuse? Um, you know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see that the Matera cabin has like excessive daily or weekly use. Especially those back rooms. It's yeah. True. So I mean, if it were on occasion, it had to be cleaned up. 
Is there a finish on the plywood boards? There isn't right now, and I'm, I've contemplated whether or not I'd want to take the time and effort to put one on it. So they're unsealed? Right. Oh, really? Right. And they'll, they'll lay flat under their own weight? Right. And they stay in place? Right. Um, so that three-quarter inch lip that's going to be at the doorway, would you? I talked to you about that. You, you'll figure out some way to take care of that, yeah, some sort of transition I, I strip. I have a lot of um, family members that are in construction and in the trades. Mm -hmm. So I, I just pick up the phone and tell them, can you come, come look at this? And sure. So the goal is to, you know, modify it, but it can't be removed every single time. Mm -hmm. Right. To this rental would be, this would be so, so yeah. it needs to be yeah. safe. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, and I know you were talking about painting and whatnot, and I, I think when that was mentioned, I said someone needs to be involved with, with that. Um, picking colors, figuring out where things go. I mean, yeah, just and control. so I don't know if I'm actually the best person to do that. The paint would be fine, but you know, <laughs> I'm not really think I would care where any I would think painting maybe goes. Off white beige or light gray or something. In a, in a way, I think it's great that um, you can do a mint we're getting green some painting a done, you know? Pardon me? You can paint it mint green. Okay, Harry. And then a mural of Aruba? <laughs> Aruba, an island off in the distance? It would have to be St. Martin. I'm partial to St. Martin's fine with me. Oh. I, I agree with you there. I'm easy no, to get along with. When my daughter um, was young, I painted her bedroom over. And I painted a whole mural of St. Martin on one wall, and it looked really cool. <laughs> that, really wasn't, that really wasn't for her, was okay. it? <laughs> it was. It uh, was. She yeah. lived there for yeah. a year, yeah. and she yeah. loved it. And that was the what last part time of she slept St. Martin? The Dutch side. Uh, wait. Wait. Yep. Because the French oh. don't talk to I have, I have one other <laughs> possible suggestion for you. I just heard uh, uh, last week that uh, the Masonic Temple is looking for outside renters. And where is that? It's um, right across Haven. the street from the post office on Haven Street. They have a downstairs hall that actually has a it actually has a tile floor. Okay. So um, let me go back to my initial thought of doing the Creative Arts and Wellness mm -hmm. Center. All along my goal was to find some place that was within nature. Mm. And, and again, I had a vision of a log cabin with trails in back. So when I came across this, I said, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. and, and in my head, eventually, I might like to revisit that with you. So to me, it made sense to, if I'm going to scale back and start something, let's just see how this happens here. How many weeks are you going to do the dance thing for? I was going to start with a 10 week session, and if it is successful, um, break at Christmas time and start another 10 week session in January. 10 week, how many nights a week? One night. Mm -hmm. She's saying one, two, and two hours. Correct. Yeah. One night a week and two hours. And the plywood you said that's for noise, huh? Yeah. It's for the sound. You got to hear the taps. Right. That's right. You going you to you take a class? And I was just going to say, yeah, discounts for anybody yeah. that's interested. Yeah. You, you need to put rubber pads on my taps. I just saw a video that was posted on YouTube of a grandfather and a little girl doing a tap dance. And it's just, it seems like it's going crazy. And then I read it more closely. And then from writing Massachusetts, the grandfather is 72 years old and the little granddaughter, they do this adorable tap dance. She does a big cartwheel at the end, and then the grandfather, 72 years old, does a big cartwheel. Ooh. 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 Yeah, that's that. <laughs> it was really good. What are the hours that you would have the class? 6 to 8, 6.30 to 8.30, somewhere in there. Probably 6.30 to 8.30. Most people you know, need to get home and Unwind from work, dinner if they have kids, six thirty. Would you do you have enough time to um, advertise and, and you know 
get ready for ten weeks before whenever your just cut off date is like November, I guess uh, November twenty fifth, something so like that. If if I were given a go ahead, I would go in there this weekend and start painting and put the floor down. I would start October. Um, so Matera Cabin is uh, under the uh, control of the Conservation Commission, but we are a uh, town body and, and need to uh, run everything past uh, the selectmen, whether that's okay. with an email or just letting them know. So I think now that we understand the plan, I uh, mean, that process can, can happen at this point. Okay. Chuck, does she need to contact the selectmen and go before them? Is, uh, is that well we could we could before you put all the time and effort into it I mean I usually run everything past uh, my direct supervisor which uh, Julie Mincier or Jean Delios and, and just to see how how the plan works with um, you know, what their expectations of the material cabin are and uh, and then I can get back back to you but I, again now we have a plan I didn't hear anyone say that's a great idea. I heard one guy say that's a great idea, and he's taking the tab class. <laughs> you could walk through the woods to go to school. Go to school. <laughs> Have you seen me tap dance in that building where we come off as foundation? <laughs> I want to see you walk through the, the back door. Twinkle, twinkle toes in the middle. on the It's yes, some poor guy that's walking his dog out yeah. there at 10 o'clock at night. People on the side of the conservation I'm, property. I'm not sure we would, would actually end up going to the selectmen. I mean, because this is completely different than you started out with. So it's really just renting the material cabin. I didn't know if there were any restrictions on renting the material cabin. I, there's a floor. There's a there's a business thing going on. Those are probably the two things I need to talk to them about. Okay. Um, and then. I haven't really. I mean, yeah, it is business, but I haven't really thought of establishing a business it's kind of a hobby because it's a one night a week thing that I'm doing right now mm -hmm. so I don't know when the line falls there like if it's a business do I have to get insurance I think the problem comes into play that's a good question it, that, it's just that is a good question and it won't I'm not suggesting it would be a problem but it was an issue once a while back when somebody was using some of the fields in town for instruction mm -hmm. and wasn't being charged for the fields and they found out it was actually charging the not giving the kids the instructions for soccer or whatever it was but he was charging them making a profit at it and he wasn't paying any fees to use the fields uh -huh. and that became a problem so just knowing this up front it helps that's all I don't think so did, did that entity have insurance? Th that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure. I know that anybody who... I'm president of the Reading Softball League, the Girls Softball League. We have to have insurance for every player that plays. Yeah. As so does Reading Little know, League and everybody else. Building insurance. I mean, is there... I'm assuming there's insurance on the building. Like, if you've got a group of Girl Scouts that are in there mm -hmm. know, decorating flowers or something. But it's insurance for people who come through the door. But if you have somebody, God forbid, somebody like Bob who took tablets <laughs> and spread his <laughs> oh, I you, Bob. <laughs> Bob, thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let before. me just turn around so you can get, yeah, take a shot at this. <laughs> you haven't been here for a while. <laughs> But, but you know what I mean, if somebody did get injured, injured while they were tapping, were, while they were, you know, getting Kicked urine. Kicked errant tap pot. <laughs> yes. You know, um, would right. you, would you so be liable? would be on me to really look into whether I should get insurance. Yeah, I, you know, I belong to a gym and, and I'm sure that they have insurance, building insurance, but I wonder if they have like, you know, personal injury well, type of insurance. When I ran dance studios, I obviously had insurance, liability insurance. Right. Um, and again, going back to the fact that this is, you know, going to be maybe four or five people in a class, one hour a week, 
is this a business? I don't know. Is this just a hobby? I would encourage you to ask somebody about that. Well, that's, well, what, you're that's not exactly right, right? right? Pardon me? You're not corporate. Gonna be no, 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 no. You're not doing business as or anything? No, none of that. What did you say, Jeff? I would be pretty certain this would have to go before the town council to get his opinion on it as well. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't usually happen until it goes through the normal process, which is to, you know, to start bringing it up the ladder. And I think we're gonna, now, I didn't have insurance before, but now we're talking about a, is it okay to have a business at the Matera Cabin? Is it okay to have, uh, how is insurance? factored in and then now the floor it's only and, four and, to five and, people and, yeah you know you've got the girl scouts but <coughs> a lot of the activities although i don't know about the rec department but many of the activities are pa pretty passive the, the, the inside. rec department is a town department you know so they would have they have insurance well i think part of the dues that the girl scouts pay covers them for any yeah this happened to what occurred during the <coughs> I should know my wife ran it for years. So I think that would be a question you'd want to ask uh, some attorney. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Or taxi Even if you know somebody that's in the insurance business, I mean you know, yeah. you pay a lawyer, somebody can explain yeah. that. <coughs> yeah. Um so if I do approach somebody about that, let me make sure that I'm clear. The town has insurance on the property itself, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what I mean, I guess my question is not only somebody who's coming to see me, but somebody who's coming to hang their coat up in there if they twist their ankle walking up the stairs. So the difference is that those other people outside, I can't explain how so rec if, if would work. Somebody, if, if a family rents it to have a Christmas so, party. Wait a the difference is that they're not running a business. And the town, would, the town may see it as they're uh, supplying insurance for your business. Do you see this as a business? Do you guys see this as well? Well, I, I think that, I, you know, it's not up to us. It sounds like a great idea. I think it's a great idea, but I think there's just some hurdles. It's not solely ours. It's right. it, it needs, I mean, we all, I want to maintain, <laughs> I want to keep my job. Uh, so I need to, you know, run it up the ladder <laughs> and um, right. and find out. But that, as we're talking, this is one of the things that That's I'm, I'm saying. It's, a, it's like, it's a great spot. And if it was a nonprofit that you know you're not charging anyone anyone anything, and you just want to be there one night, it, it seemed to me that that would qualify. Um, but it, it sounds like you're using this material cabin as your business. So in a way, the town is supplementing or filling in the blanks that you right. are unable to do yourself. Let me ask another. Go ahead. Well, just a little advice. You, you go on the Attorney General's <coughs> website and file as a nonprofit, as an educational nonprofit. Just because you're nonprofit doesn't mean you can't charge money or make money. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah, I mean, that's because we're, 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 we're a 501c3 in our little league, but we charge profit. We charge. We charge yes. fees for people to play, and then we throw that money back into the league field improvements or equipment or clinics, things like that, so. But would that preclude me from still having time insurance if I was a nonprofit? No, I, liability is liability. I don't right. think that, that's, that's a different, I was just trying to help you maybe paint a more attractive picture for whether or not it's a profit or non-profit business. Very attractive, good idea. Thank you. So, okay. Um, I think we have your plan. Let me let me make the first steps before you go and talk to the lawyers or whoever else you, you want to do, so you're not, uh, you know, spending a lot of time and energy and finding out before I find out if it's even going to get to a certain level. Okay, I'll check back. With you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much.
So. Um, I do have a bill, and just reminding you again, but we can get back on the order of. I think where we left off was. I think it's the chair. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not this chair. Not you, the chair of the board. <laughs> I'm at the chair. We just issued the certificate of compliance for 73 Fairchild. And right. the next yep. one would be um, the pipeline Tennessee gas at, at uh, the right way at 2 Beaver Road. Yep. We took a look at that. Yep. Um, looked pretty good, actually. It's awesome. So, Iris. Are we going to issue that? I mean, I, I thought it looked great. Yeah, I thought it looked good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just I'm getting you back, guys. Yeah. What I was doing, I was just getting you back on track. You're going to bring it up. People are going to discuss it, and then someone's going to make a motion. So yeah. that's where okay. we're at with the process. So we got two looks good. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it was good. It looked good because they said it looked good. I've never seen anything before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have shot. was running cleanly. You should have saw it beforehand. It is fall. such a difference, yeah. and okay. it was that very, like very was. complicated. Many meetings. I yeah. see. Uh, the engineering behind it was... Was it articulated <coughs> corrugated map, or was it just articulated <laughs> something map? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. You could tell it was a map, and that stuff sure looked like that. But we went all the way through all the meetings, and we didn't have hardly a lick of rain all last, last summer. Uh, and then when they went to do the job, we had two hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it couldn't have been any poor uh, timing, but they got through it, and... They did a really they right. stuck to it, and they did a good job. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to uh, issue the certificate of compliance uh, two seventy dash zero six eight five two Beaver Road uh, pipeline right away Tennessee gas. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. All right. Before we go, let's sign the last two. Uh, 73 Fairchild. Chuck, did you have an opportunity to speak with uh, 218 Salem in between the time that we went there? I talked to him this afternoon. Mm -hmm. so was he all set with what you wanted? He said that he had actually been out there two weeks before pulling Japanese knotweed, and he had done it last Saturday also in anticipation of us coming out. Yep. And I said, you know, I told him that, uh, you know, he, he asked for to have a lawn, and you know, now he has one, and he's going to maintain it. So he knew, but he, he was wondering how long it would take by hand filling Japanese knotweed to see some difference. I said three years. Yep, pretty much. Uh, Anybody want to? Oh, no, do we all agree? Really when you're cool. doing uh, what? When pulling you're Japanese knotweed. It really was small. <laughs> it was pretty small, and it was yeah, I gotta find it. Um, it was pretty small, and um, I didn't think that it was uh, a big issue. But he, you know, he's a little. It's hard to get to get in there. I mean, the guy isn't uh, you know. So what does it take three years for it to do to abate? It's definitely, it's brightest for it to come back. back. Yeah, yeah. 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 But oh, the, oh, you just yeah. no matter what you, you know. do, yeah, you can kill the top. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Now, if you put a defoliant on there, I see a lot of snakes in my dry season. They spray a lot of like down roots and wipe it up. I have that early wetland. No, it's really tough stuff. But it's easy. Not not. Oh, you can use uh, I see a Agent Orange or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the problem. You can use uh, like Roundup or something Round like up, that, yeah. but we don't want that kind of stuff. There's actually uh, a lawsuit going on. Well, I guess on yeah, no. right, and all I that. So that's no one's using. You know, this this is, is this something you can speak of. I mean, what what I mean, but chemicals next to the wetland is not ever a good idea. No, I mean over the over the well, most of the over the counter Home Depot stuff is a little bit less concentrated, but. And even that, they get all kinds of things. Stay at least 200 feet away from open waters, and don't spray this, and don't yeah. spray in the rivers. And so I got to believe it's. And it also just doesn't. Um, 
it really helps seasonally. It doesn't, and I, I have a lot of poison ivy, and unless you try to pull some of it out of the ground or kind of chop some of the vines, it, it will just come back, unfortunately. Oh, I yeah, used to be full of it. Yeah, I think right, too. as I walk more around, around this one's ten feet everywhere. Yes. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, so he was pleased. He was, he, uh, so when we went out there, he didn't have much of a lawn, and, you know, it was a very restricted area, and the commission worked with him, and he has, you know, an okay lawn. Mm -hmm. He has something that you could actually throw a ball around right. in, has a garden, and he has uh, an area that he can maintain how he wants as long as it doesn't have invasives growing in it and only has native plants in there so yeah also given the fact as to how much knotweed was there when we first went there that was loaded with knotweed oh yeah that, that mezzanine area that was inside the the wall where it first was So do I hear a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 270-0667 to 18 Spring Street? Sales I'm sorry, Street. Salem Street. Why did I say Because I don't have my glasses on. I will make a motion. Oh, no, you've broken Dave's perfect record. <laughs> for tonight. The issue. <laughs> Told you it was the chair. So Bob and <laughs> who's going to second? Oh, well, I can't. Oh, there you I'm, go. I'm making the motion. <laughs> I was getting really tired. Issue the certificate of compliance to seven zero zero six six seven to eighteen Salem Street, Duanshan Yanyan. I don't know how you pronounce that. For your second. Second. All those in favor? Great. All right. Awesome. I don't, I don't think I'm going to try the last name, but I know it's Menendra. Is that how you, does anybody know how to pronounce? Uh, yeah, I would say Warshan. Warshan yeah. Yanya? Menendra. No, this is Y O. Is, he, <laughs> is that Menendra is the first name? Yanya. Oh. Yanjian? Oh. You know, that's not right. M Menendra is Menendra. Like right? Your first attempt was good. Yanya? Yanya? Well, uh, but is it is that Spanish? I have to ask. I'm not sure. No, they're from Nepal. Yeah. <laughs> that, well, I was going to say. So <laughs> I didn't know if it was two separate people or one person. <laughs> the Onion could be Spanish. Okay, you're right. I, right. I, the way we pronounced it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just you can make look it sound this. That's Spanish. <laughs> I think we should just be quiet about that when it's issued. That might be wise. <laughs> Uh, do you have, are you bringing the, the uh, Ocean River Institute thing back up? No, they, he came to, um, he came to Arlington and we listened to him and um, he gave his presentation. I wasn't, it, it, it was great, but when it came to, he would, he would tell us his presentation and then when he, when he got some feedback and some questions, he had no answers. So we were wondering, um, because it was based in the case, and how, how did it do, and what did they measure it against, and things like that. But he was like, the only thing he wanted to do is to have it implemented, because the results work. And we wanted to know, you know, where was the control piece to, to right. you know, compare this to. Um, so he didn't have that. He didn't. He didn't know how enforcement would work. He didn't want to get into that. So it, it was a good presentation, but it, it left a lot to try to figure out for yourself as a commission I, if you wanted to do such a thing. I thought the write-up was also like that. It was uh, curtailing. Uh, was it nitrogen or phosphorus from you know? I just threw that. I just recycled it. <laughs> and and you know curtailing the runoff. The, the nutrients that all these landscapers use typically, you know, to deluge your, your your lawns with, to cut down on that so that, you know, you weren't seeing, you know, algae blooms. Like if you go to Lake Quantapau right now, it's a nice blue-green algae. Yeah, I just saw that. <laughs> yeah. Is that a byproduct of... Um, <clears throat> Eutrophication, yeah, runoff. Runoff. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. 
And and it, it looked like I used to actually identify blue green algaes and count them because <laughs> the company I worked for actually did lake treatments mm -hmm. and that stuff. And uh, actually, if it gets that bad, if you ingest some of that, it's pretty. It can be poisonous. So they actually ask you not to let your dogs. Do you, you realize know, there's no such thing as poison? Only poisonous dosages. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. They, they, it would be poisonous dosage. <laughs> no, but when you think about yeah, that, it sounds true. like a silly comment, but it's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why they rate poison in yeah. like pots per billion to see how many people it would kill. But you'll see, you know, fish die off because that stuff is taking out the, all the oxygen out of the water. So, and that's what they were talking about in this ocean. What was it called? Ocean Institute? Um, ocean River Institute. <coughs> yeah. In so where, which we where, didn't, I didn't never understood. Were things like natural, like chicken and cow manure, was that, you know, that's still the same product because the nitrate comes down? He said right. mulch yeah, yeah, your, yeah. your lawn. Did, I don't know if anybody else saw this. Not a, I don't know if it was a hoax, but there's a real concern when this hurricane hits South Carolina or North Carolina. There are these huge swine like septic areas, like like runoff cesspool for the swine discharge and, and excrement, and they're thinking, what are they going to do with this when these floodwaters hit this septage? You know, where is this going to go? What kind of problems? Yeah, they, you know, they got a real concern with that right now. If, if the article was no, that BS. sounds realistic to me. Imagine it that. It sounds realistic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds very realistic. But you know, you think about that stuff and you go. It's a little rain, right? You get nine feet of water. No, it's two, that two feet of water. Two feet of water. Yeah, two feet. It's going mean, to dump it right on it. They have a lot of time. This is the first one I We have two or three inches of rain. They're talking 20 to 30 inches of right. rain. Yeah. That's like dry. I mean, that's like you remember when Hurricane months. Sandy hit? And, and I, read, I read somewhere once that enough rain fell out of that storm to cover the state of Texas by three feet of water. Wow. That's a pretty big state. Yeah. yeah. This is the stalling, the storm stalling is yeah. in the it time is. that they have to prepare. No, it's just that's the whole thing. It, obviously, we've been talking about it for a week. At yeah, the rate uh, it's going, it's never going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, so a lot of things can happen. They keep saying that. Yeah. No, um, I don't, you kept thinking it was going to come up, but I don't think it's going to come up. I don't think I, no, no, that's not true. Fall? I wanted yeah. it to go towards the Gulf Coast. That was my thought. I wanted to go that way, but I thought it would come up. I said, that's usually you how it Do people in Florida you don't like her? <laughs> no. He's not answering this. <laughs> There's a reason, but I will pass the, I'll tell you after the meeting. Okay. It has nothing to do with I love everyone, and it well, has, nice. it's a different, different thing. Yeah. Um, Anything? Chuck, we had one other paper in our uh, packet that's not on the agenda, and it was on... Uh, Redding Woods? Redding Woods. Is that just... Oh, uh, just remind me, what, what was it about? It's, a, it's on... They uh, want a certificate of compliance? The certificate of compliance for Redding Woods, about them. Yes, you asked me that, that in the car. Um, Redding Woods is looking for the certificates of compliance. The Redding Woods is at, you know, right where Stoneham. And um, so we were working with uh, their engineer, and me and Becky went out there, and me and other people went out there, and Dave, Dave was Neumeyer out. was out there. Um, and we identified some things. They said that they're going to do that, and their planting plan in that letter says that it's going to be this fall. So yep. there was... I mean, typically you need all the work to be completed before you would, uh, you know, issue the certificate of compliance. So yeah. I read that letter as, this is our plan, say yes to it, which I have. And, um, you know, there's one part where the, they're not going to do some uh, planting and they're going to give some money to the shade tree fund. Right. Now, if you want the background on that, was when they, when they took down the trees for building seven, uh, the guy fell asleep at the wheel and he cut way deep into where that zone of natural vegetation was supposed to be. And in lieu of that destruction, they said, well, we'll just do some planting here. Uh, New England Environmental came out two times and planted a whole host of, of different wetland plants that never took off, it never established itself. 
and it, it just seemed to be ridiculous that they were spending that money. So I asked that, you know, maybe they could come up with something else, and this is what they came up with. So uh, I do expect that before the end of the year. We've been out there a few times. I think just just the granite bounds. They've agreed to put those in. Um, and the granite bounds aren't based on the 25-foot ZNB. There's actually a 100-foot ZNB in some spaces, some spots back there. And there's actually a no-mow area, too. And it was all incorporated by bounds. So in the future, it's just going to be super confusing, whoever looks at those bounds, to try to figure out where you are. So the bounds that we thought were, why are they here? Were exactly. they there right. on purpose? Yeah, I, I guess they wanted to have that whole area back of Building 7 natural. So they gave them that four or five foot mow zone to maintain the back of the building. You know, it's one of those things. Um, and then the bounds worked in, in different spots. But it's 100 feet away, it's 75 feet away, it's around the outside of a tree instead of being on the inside of a tree. And he wasn't pulling up what was there, so we had to look at what was there and then place bounds so it made more sense. That's what we came up with. But the 100 foot, the 75 foot, and the uh, maintenance row of granite bounds was not my idea. <coughs> they were installed already. So the uh, one of the things it does mention here was the uh, the lowest detention area slash rain garden was getting choked up by sumac trees. It was sumac, and it was also uh, right. um, what's the tree from Florida? Mimosa, it was mimosa in there too. But there also there was supposed to be wetland plants in there that were all choked out and dead. And they, they, there's no mention of that in this letter. There's not going to be too many wetland plants in there. That's a very dry okay. area for the okay. most part, so they're not going to do well. I mean, I think just vegetated so we can maintain. Or, you know, no erosion. Okay. It was really vegetated when I saw it. I didn't see it as a tremendous amount of sumac, um, <clears throat> but they could pull those out and not plant anything, and it okay. would look fine. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they're, they're apparently they're, they want to plant. I wouldn't put well and plants in there. Okay. Because it'll get choked out again. Are those those two? No, because it's, it's not a wetland. It's a, it's it's a rain yeah. garden. Yeah. It's, it's basically yeah. a runoff for some stormwater. Mm -hmm. It's a detention yeah. basin. Yeah. Right. So Are those the ones on the right going yeah. down the right? Yeah. It's outside of our jurisdiction, but we were asked to, you know, give an, give an opinion throughout this project. It was part of the order of conditions. So those are outside of our jurisdiction, but we need to give a final okay on them. And I, I think they're close. I mean, I, I mean, vegetation is the main thing. No erosion. But is it working? Can people go in there and maintain it? You can't just let those things just grow out and, you know, 25-foot trees in the center. It has to be maintained. So when the condo commission takes over, they want to know what it should be so they will be able to main it, maintain it in the future to that specification. So is this we holding off on this until this is actually done? We'll probably be walking through that in October. Okay. But there's he'll have to uh, send me an email and tell me when they're ready. Okay. Anything else, Chuck? Doesn't look like it. Bill? Did you have an, yeah, we have a bill, and did you have another question about another project for me? No, I, I, it's already continued, so it was something. I can, yeah, so th no, that's it. Um, there's a storm, storm drain study going on in town. Yeah. And that's yielding results um, that need to be verified. Uh, but there's that, so you'll see DPW and CDM out uh, walking all the drainage ditches and the outfalls and marking them and taking samples. They're checking for chlorine. And chlorine motor oil and bacteria, and they send they send the samples out in an eight-hour day. They send them out twice, so they can only hold the bacteria samples for four hours. So they're doing about twenty-four a day, and they've been making great progress. But there has to be um, you know a time frame between the last storm. Because what we're looking for is we're looking for flow, flow in non-rain conditions. Well, I can tell you where there's no flow, and it's on Main Street, mm -hmm. across from 
Um, there's home goods, then there's a nursing home, then mm -hmm. there's a, uh, I guess, a assisted living or something, or... At Cedar... Cedar something? Cedar Glen. Cedar Glen. Right across from there, there is a storm drain that when it rains, if you're not paying attention and it hits the right two wheels of your car, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have bad tires, you're going to have a miserable day. And it fills up like that. I don't know where the, I mean, I know where the water's supposed to go because it's just to the right of it's all wet. But I don't know if it's plugged or what. I meant is to call it, somebody that's about highway. that. Is that a typical it's, it's a highway. It's a state highway, though, right? So, that's yes. highway. Yep. So if Reading has no, they can't go over there and clean it or anything? Well, they could, but they don't. They don't. don't. Okay. They just, you know, they're, they, I mean, they follow the rules. But no, I, I mean, I'm just saying, it, 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 I'll shoot off an email to the state. They've probably got a thousand of them. Yeah. It's notoriously bad in the winter as well. Um, we're having mosquito co control come in uh, to uh, identify a couple of drainage ditches that they can uh, clear. We did this last year. Um, and so the problem is that when, you know, com mosquito control can come in and not need a notice of intent, um, they have, you know, powers beyond conservation so they can just deem something uh, you know a mosquito issue you know they want to get the water moving they don't want it pooling and the this office and the engineering department have uh, you know liked the way that this guy his name's we call him mosquito Mike but he comes in from mosquito control and uh, he likes working here and he's done he did three last year and he's doing two more this year um, but yeah, I got it. Morton Field area. So there's a drainage ditch next to Morton Field. Mm -hmm. You must know that one. Um, that runs along the field, along the home plate, the third base side of that Morton Field. Oh, that's oh, you're talking about along the left field foul line. Yeah. Oh, sure. And that goes on and tees into another ditch. And they're doing that one too, but only spot treatments there. So there's at the uh, outfall, the there's a lot of sand buildup. Uh, so they'll be second. taking that Street. out. Yes. That and they'll be taking out yes. what obstructions there are further down. They're restricted to be to going approximately 500 square feet, about a thousand linear feet five foot wide area, you know, something like that. Uh, you know, they're about, so I, I, you know, I did the math like six or seven times, it's a, it's a little bit over, but no one's calling them on 20, 50 feet, something like that. So he, he's gonna take care of those two places this year. You still Next, have treatments in the water? They don't do any treatment. They basically dredge and side cast. These areas won't be side cast where it doesn't work and the DPW will be, be working with them to collect the stuff. So no one's throwing it on the field. So the idea is just to get the water flowing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stay right. water because yeah. mm -hmm. So if you go to that culvert that the path goes over in the kind of the center of all the fields, there's there's a lot of buildup right there. There's actually a, um, a carriage from some, you know, I don't know, home goods or something like that right there for like a year. I remember that. Yeah. Well, it was and I keep, kept on mentioning the finally it going to the culvert. That's what it was there for. Was. So they're going to work that and they can work down there. <laughs> And then uh, we've been asked, as on a separate note that has nothing to do with engineering, but it has something to do with recreation, asked for two members um, to go, me and one other member to go, it, but more can go if they want, to talk to the recreation department next Tuesday at 5.30 uh, and explain the jurisdictional areas of that um, is it bear metal, birch metal? Birch Meadow. Birch Meadow. Birch Meadow. Um, so I don't know if someone's available that wants to tandem with me. It's 5.30 next Tuesday, and they're going to say, this. we want to try to do some work. You know, there's two, like, ponds. They flood and they skate on. But, you know, I'm just going to tell you their side of it. Oh, in Castine's field? Yeah, Castine's part of this discussion. They yeah. want to know. They always want to know what can they do there outside of what's what's flooding well, they always, and the places wet. Fill in. For the rec department? Yeah, yeah. They always want to fill it in and turn it into a. That a, part of casting. I'm not saying that they're proposing that. <coughs> I'm just saying I've heard that. In the they past. have in the past. Sure. I can do that. When we skated down there as a kid. Five thirty. Because the mornings are tough for me, but after work is open. Okay. Yeah. Five thirty. So the, um, I you don't want me going to the rec committee with you. 
Because you'll say, yeah. No, I've had it. some <laughs> unpleasant meetings with them, and even though it was on oh, okay. field usage and Sunday mm -hmm. mornings, all sort of stuff, <clears throat> I, I would want to taint any productive conversations. But we, as kids, used to walk across Birch Meadow Drive just before it turns into John Carver because we'd skate down there in Castine Field and it wasn't Castine Field then it was just Birch Meadow yeah. we'd walk across the street in our skates of course and then get into the wetlands on the side of the road and skate all the way down to which was Zitzos at the time and now it's P&S yeah. you could skate from, from P&S all the way back to Birch Meadow and, and just Never, never get off the ice. Every year or just occasionally? Because that's a stream. Every year it would freeze up? Well, I was a kid. We, we did it numerous times. I, I, I don't know if it was every year or that's cool. a couple times yes. a year. But in the winter, when we get enough water and snow and ice. and That's another trail from uh, Birch Meadow down to PNS. On well, skates. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it comes out right at the beginning of the other one we talked about. Yeah. PNS. So that's 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 all I have. I don't know any upcoming projects. We have um, we haven't been we haven't got the filing for Lakeview and Eaton yet. And 364 Lowell Street. We just did a site visit there, and they wanted to show us how they've maintained the stream. I think that the engineering's been out there since. They're okay with everything that we saw. They've taken out the leaf litter in the stream. They, they've they removed any overhang of shrub that was going in the stream that would block flow. And again, we're looking to get the flow from Lowell Street underneath the tracks. Um, so it goes down along the project. Back into the river, the Junior River, right? Yeah, yeah, and it goes from Lowell Street towards the tracks. That's the flow, and there's a left hand, right hand turn, like a dog leg right, and then it turns dog leg left underneath the tracks. And there's a culvert right there that's blocked, and they're having a little bit of a tougher time clearing that out. But they'll get that. Um, the project for any of the buildings won't start until the road's in place and there's at least that binder course on it. So that's going to be in conjunction with the wetland and the detention pond and any of that BMPs that we asked for on, if you're entering the project, the right hand side, the left hand side of the, of the project where the house, the existing house is. So all that has to be finished up or near finished before they're going to start actually putting in foundations. So How many houses are they put in there? Three. Isn't it? Three? Four. Two. They're going to have four at the end, right? So the one in the back and the two that are outside the wetland area and the one that exists. And the one that yeah, exists, the one exists is there. getting a big garage that's about the size of the house. Jeez. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <coughs> And it has a septic tank in back. Yeah, and tonight was gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Needs to be abandoned. That's how old the house was. It had a septic. When I... Well, I mean, Did you skate there too? Well, I, I know people on Daring Street, right? Yeah. That had live cesspools in their backyard when I was a kid in the 50s. Open cesspools in their backyard. Mm. Mm. Disgusting. Well, that's really that's that's, it. The, that's the rundown. I mean, okay. that's what we're doing. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All oh, fit. don't adjourn. No. Uh, too late. Do you want to hey. open? We'll go back open. Yeah. Open up the session. Um, we have a bill, thirteen dollars and fourteen cents for the curb cut at Bear Bear Meadow. Um, where the parking lot is. So we have to pay water and sewer because we have a curb cut to a parking area. We should probably just add that on. It's one of those yeah. life, yeah. life's yeah. injustices. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'd like to see some backup for that. We actually, we did all that, and when they look through, then when they look through the back bills, we actually paid them too much for several years, so we actually got to float for a while, and then now we're paying again. Yep. Do we so, have a motion? Uh, Make a motion to pay the bill for the curb cut on Pearl Street. Royer. Second. Those in favor? All right.
Good now. Adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Meeting adjourned. You know when you were screaming at those.